Welcome to the second episode of the Shire of Jinjin's Integrated Planning Series. Following on from the Strategic Community Plan, this episode, Building on Our Assets, will look at the Asset Management Plan. The Shire of Jinjin is responsible for an extensive mix of assets, including land, infrastructure and machinery that it owns, as well as those it is responsible for managing. While a number of facilities are leased, the Shire, as the landowner, must still factor in operational costs as determined in the lease agreement and scheduled future renewal. The Asset Management Plan outlines how a local government will maintain and manage its assets over a 10-year period. This includes the how, where, when and to what maintenance standards. Other considerations include the age and condition, the number and ongoing needs of each asset, level of use and accessibility and prioritisation of maintenance requirements. Due to the sheer number of assets, the Shire must consider what it can afford and if similar facilities in close proximity also meet the needs of the community. Facilities may also be categorised as principal or secondary facilities, which means that they may receive different levels of service. Asset management also includes factoring in whole of life costs of assets. What is whole of life costs, you ask? Whole of life costs generally include any of the costs associated with the maintenance, repairs and service needs, including staffing, contractor, equipment and material costs. Operating costs, examples are insurance, utilities such as power and water, and cleaning and incidentals such as toilet paper and bin bags. As these assets already exist and are included in the asset management plan, these costs are non-discretionary expenditure due to the ongoing upkeep of the asset. The Asset Management Plan reviews an asset's condition and also identifies the end of life of the asset. Discretionary expenditure, on the other hand, is costs associated with wants or renewals, including upgrades, expansions and new assets. Whole of life costs must be considered as part of any new capital project, as these operating costs continue for the life of the asset and will affect the Shire's financial capacity. Whole of life costs can also include annual loan and interest payments for projects that require additional funding. In a nutshell, any additional or upgraded assets mean existing resources will be spread thinner to service both the additional and existing asset portfolio unless additional funding is sourced. As the Shire of Jinjin receives many requests each year for upgrades, expansions and new assets, the Shire must assess each project against a list of criteria. Requests include those asking the Shire to undertake new projects, as well as those requested by a community group or club who lease a Shire asset and seek upgrades. Even if the proposed project is not seeking Shire funding to implement, operational costs such as insurance increases, utilities and staffing requirements need to be included in asset and long-term financial planning. If the Shire is or will be the owner or responsible in any way for the asset, there is likely to be costs and resourcing that will need to be factored in. To support this process, the Shire has introduced the Concept Inquiry, which provides the community and stakeholders the opportunity to submit their proposed project for assessment. Assessment criteria includes benefits to the community, rationale, project and whole of life costs, distance from similar facilities and prioritisation. An FAQ sheet provides full details of this process and is available at the Shire's website and administration offices. The Shire has a responsibility to plan for financial sustainability and a manageable number of assets. A smart assessment management strategy is essential rather than not meeting expectations. For more information on the integrated planning series, visit the Shire's website or phone the Shire's administration office on 9575 5100. Thank you for joining us.